Elemental Gimmick Gear is an action RPG that sees players assuming the role of a man named Leon. The narrative presented is surprisingly deep and is subject to many twists and turns along the way which help keep the player engaged. But gameplay is where the experience truly shines and primarily revolves around the armour Leon possesses. You start out with simple attacks but over the course of the adventure you'll soon find yourself learning devastating moves that conjure up ice beams and even earthquakes that all help level the odds against the enemy. Now the combat is in no way unique, overall it is well implemented and fought out which helps make it an enjoyable aspect of the game. As well as battles, Elemental Gimmick Gear also presents several puzzles that soon become a huge part of the overall experience. Not all of them are limited to a single room and can play into an entire area which is bound to stump even the most proficient of players. Now is the perfect time to jump in and give it a go for yourself. Initially released on the PC, it wasn't until later that Infogram Silver came to the Sega Dreamcast. What helps the experience stand out is the real-time battling system that sees the player taking control of one of the many characters in your party, with the rest being handled by the game's AI. Now there's a lot of options open to the player, from standard attacks, magic and defensive abilities which all have their role to play in each encounter. As with most RPGs, you'll be levelling up, finding or earning a multitude of weapons, abilities and items in order to aid you on the way and it's a pretty sizeable adventure as well which sees you traversing a whole range of unique locations whilst meeting a cast of characters and NPCs that add a real weight to the world. Now Silver landed pretty well under the radar upon its release with the likes of Final Fantasy VIII and Baldur's Gate to compete with. It's easy to see why but in my opinion it stands shoulder to shoulder with its contemporaries and offers one of the finest RPGs on the system. Time Stalkers is essentially a roguelike RPG that sees the player taking up the role of a young boy known as Sword. After a series of events land him in an alternate world, he ultimately needs to find a way home and must overcome the various trials and obstacles that block the way. It sounds like a rather cliche setup, but the story present within Time Stalkers soon becomes one of the real highlights of the experience. Gameplay is pretty straightforward, with you travelling to each dungeon, defeating the monsters and boss, then returning to town, rinse and repeat. It may have the potential to turn off some players but for fans of roguelikes you'll feel instantly at home. As you would expect, Sword possesses a range of abilities and skills that over the course of the game can be developed and unlocked. Now it may not be for everyone but for what it offers, Time Stalkers is well and truly worth a purchase. Evolution, the world of sacred device, puts the player into the shoes of Maglauncher, a young adventurer who sets out on a journey with a mysterious girl that he's been instructed to take care of. Now gameplay is generally straightforward with a focus upon devastating weapons known as Psyframes and of course battles. Each encounter takes place in a turn-based fashion but this usual style of play is given a bit of a twist as the player can rearrange the order of the party depending on how close or far you are from the enemy. There are several planes on the battlefield that will change change the amount of damage given or received. In addition to all of this, there are several unique weapons and special manoeuvres that can be utilised in battle depending on what certain psi frames you have. This all manages to make the battle system actually fairly complex and rewarding for those that take the time to get used to its rather intricate aspects. Overall, Evolution is a really fun RPG with enough lovable characters, interesting quirks and moments to make it something that every fan of the genre should give a go. record of Lodos War shares much in common with the likes of Diablo and presents the player with a huge variety of dungeons in which to explore and overcome. The main hook of the experience will see you constantly changing or upgrading your equipment in order to get stronger as you advance through the journey and encounter a range of enemies that all escalate in difficulty the further you progress. New equipment can be found in the field or bought at the island's village that acts as a sort of safe haven and allows the player to carefully plan ahead and prepare for each skirmish. Several spells are also at your disposal, which can be learned through acquiring books and special ores throughout the environment. By locating them, an extra edge in battle is afforded to the player, such as elemental attacks and spells that even the odds. Gameplay well and truly is the best aspect of the experience. The need to constantly improve will keep players coming back time and time again, so if you're looking for a neat action RPG on the Dreamcast, look no further than Record of Lodos.
the time of its release, Shenmue was a highly unique game developed by AM2 with Yu Suzuki at the helm. It introduced a completely new experience that allowed the player to essentially live within a Japanese town and follow the day-to-day -day life of a young man known as Ryo Hazuki. After a tragic encounter that results in the death of his father, the player is plunged into an intriguing plot that involves exploring and investigating the various leads left by his father's killer. Now the sheer level of freedom present within the game is truly incredible. Each location you come across can be meticulously searched, right down to individual drawers and cabinets. It is so easy to get lost in the incredible attention to detail and diversity in things to do, from mini games such as Hang On and Darts at the local arcade, to practicing martial arts at the dojo and evolving Ryo's abilities over the course of the journey. If you've never got around to experiencing Shenmue, it is now available across modern platforms in the form of a remaster that packs this and its sequel together, so that is the best way to play it today. Fantasy Star Online version 2 improves and evolves everything that was presented in the original by adding a slew of extra content and features that make this version the best way to experience this game on the system. The story introduces us to Pioneer 2, a huge ship that is looking to colonize the distant planet of Ragol. After a huge explosion rocks the planet, several hunters are sent down to investigate the cause. As the player you take up the role of one of these hunters and have the option of choosing from several classes that all possess their own unique unique attributes in use within battle. Each encounter plays out in real time, with a huge amount of weaponry and items that can be earned over the course of the adventure, all playing their role in taking on the surprisingly diverse amount of enemy types. Complementing all of this are the several locations that are present within the game, that each have their own distinct look and feel, lending each skirmish to the surface a real sense of exploration. Fantasy Star Online version 2 offers a huge amount of content that is bound to last most players hours upon hours, and with the ability to still play it online, albeit through unofficial means, it is a game that will keep on giving. Shenmue 2 picks up right after the events of the first entry, and once again sees players assuming the role of Ryo Hazuki. Leaving Japan behind and travelling to Hong Kong, the experience opens up in a huge way when compared to the previous game. The locations you'll be visiting are far more varied both in size and detail, as well as the narrative that really starts to develop and introduce new elements for players to digest. Now gameplay wise, much remains the same. A huge focus upon exploration and martial arts are still at the forefront, with a couple of new features that make the overall experience more user friendly, such as a handy map and the introduction of pawn shops that can really help out when money is running tight. But just exploring the vast areas that are presented is the real star of the show, to the bustling docks of Hong Kong, to the more tranquil offerings of the Chinese countryside. There is a lot to see and do over the course of the adventure, with plenty of optional content to get stuck into as well. If you haven't played Shenmue before, I highly recommend playing the first game prior to jumping into this, as it does require an understanding of the events that have taken place to be fully appreciated. As a sequel to the beloved PlayStation and Sega Saturn classic, Grandia 2 manages to retain many of the aspects of the original that made it so memorable, mainly its outstanding characters and battling system that all receive as much love and attention in this entry as they did in the first. The battle system once again all revolves around something known as the IP gauge, which depicts each character through a small image. Once the character reaches the end of the gauge, it is their turn to attack. This system allows for the flow of the combat to constantly remain engaged and goes a long way in making each encounter all the more enjoyable. By defeating enemies, the player receives several rewards, which can be used to learn new abilities or strengthen existing moves, which allows the player to fully express and grow the characters in a way that they see fit. Now it's not that often that even minor battles are as engaging or rewarding as they are in Grandia 2, and for this reason alone, the game well and truly deserves a look for those who have not yet got round to playing it. Skies of Arcadia is well and truly the finest RPG on the Dreamcast. Rarely has each element such as battles, story, visuals and sound come together to create a near perfect experience for both fans of the genre and newcomers alike. The adventure begins with a mysterious girl being attacked by an airship. Our gang of heroes swoop in and save the girl, but stumble into a tale that spans generations and soon embark on a journey that encompasses the entire kingdom. Battles play out in a turn-based manner and present 
present the usual options to the player, but where it truly comes into its own is through the use of the spirit system. Each magic action within battle is beholden to the amount of spirit points you possess, and it all soon becomes a unique balancing act of trying to manage your points in the most efficient way possible. Throughout the adventure, you'll be encountering specific items that allow each character's abilities to grow and flourish. The experience will generally last around 60 hours, if you also complete the generous amount of optional content as well, making Skies of Arcadia one of the most robust RPGs the system has to offer. Well that does it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click subscribe to be notified of videos in the future. 